Welcome back to the Solutions Lab. I'm Chris Phillips, Solutions Specialist here with DNH, and today we're here to talk about computers. But not any kind of computers. No, we're here to talk about workstation systems. The hardware that makes them up, how it differs from other systems on the market, the software that they run, and the operating system that it uses. And that'll be important for our second part when we talk about Microsoft's new iteration of Windows 10 Pro entitled Windows 10 Pro for workstations. We'll also go over some examples of when a workstation system would be good to use compared to a commercial system, and some examples of when a commercial system might just be fine as well. But before we get to all of that, it's very important that we actually define what a workstation system is. And here in front of me, we have a variety of different types of systems that you would generally see in the market. Uh, over to my uh, right here, we have a tiny form factor consumer uh, system. You also see tiny form factors in the commercial systems. We'll show that a little bit later. We have a laptop form factor, actual workstation back there. It's running a Xeon E3 processor. And we have a tower form factor, a P720 system uh, over here to my left. But I want to start real quick with the consumer systems. This is actually a Think Center M710Q. It has a standard Celeron processor, minimum memory, minimum hard drive. Uh, this is great for home use, whether you're using it to do web browsing, light Word documents, school work, things of that nature. It's got Windows 10 Home. This is designed for home use, for small, type, uh, small usage day in, day out. Not great for commercial use. You guys probably know by now, this is not the type of system you want to put in any one of your uh, the customers, businesses out there, because it's just not going to be as reliable as a commercial system. Uh, over to my far right, we actually have a setup of a commercial system. It's in the same form factor as the tiny consumer system. However, the internal components are very different. Uh, this one's running an i7. It has 8 gigs of memory. It has a 250 gig SSD. And it also has its own internal GPU. Uh, the actual Think Center uh, tiny line, the P300 uh, line, does have its own option for its uh, dedicated GPU. Now, we all have a good idea of what the commercial systems are used for. They're being put into our customers' environments all the time to run things like Office, whether that be Word, PowerPoint, Excel, Outlook. They do some web browsing. They also can do a little bit more some high-intensity applications like Photoshop, audio editing, web design, things of that nature. Uh, they have a three-year warranty compared to the standard one year in a uh, consumer system. Uh, so these are generally designed to be used for a wide variety of purposes in a commercial environment. This differs from what an actual workstation is used for. A workstation systems are generally used in a more high-intensity environment such as CAD work or post-production work for videos. Um, they're also used in medical imaging, photorealistic rendering, uh, data analysis, uh, programs that move a lot of bits around the system very, very quickly. Um, and workstation systems require having all that extra hardware, whether it be a Xeon with 10 cores or ECC memory, to help handle, move around all that data. Um, in most cases, if you're using uh, a non-ECC memory system to do data analysis, if there's even a little bit of data corruption that happens in the memory, without that error correction that you would get in the ECC memory, that can quickly snowball into a system crash. Uh, we'll talk about how that can affect the system when we actually start showing some practical use cases for workstations a little bit later. But Having that hardware difference where you're using ECC memory to prevent that crash from happening uh, makes a workstation system a much more valid option instead of a commercial system for something like data analysis or any other high intensity application. Uh, these are actually, actually going to run those programs a lot faster too, which makes those specialists that are doing those jobs all the more effective at what they're doing, giving you a better return on investment on that system as well. Now, the operating system that has been running these workstation systems has been pretty much the same. 
they're usually running either the highest va available version of Windows, whether that be Windows 7 Pro or Enterprise, or Windows 10 Pro or Enterprise in the current environment, or more commonly, they're actually running Windows Server 2016 standard. And they're doing this because, as we discussed, they actually have more in common in terms of hardware with a server than they do a standard commercial system. They're running a Xeon processor, sometimes two to four. They have ECC memory, and they need an operating system that understands the hardware it's running and is designed to take advantage of that hardware. Now, Microsoft has realized this is an issue and has actually developed a new version of Windows entitled Windows 10 Pro for workstations. Now, this version of Windows is actually designed to take advantage of that server-grade hardware but still be in your standard Windows environment. There's one thing that I would like to note right now because it's one of the key things to remember when you're doing a new install for Windows uh, on a workstation system. Past the fall creators update of 2017, any new Windows workstation system, that's any system that actually is running a Xeon processor, must actually have Windows 10 Pro for workstations as its operating system. Now, that actually leads to two logical follow-up questions, and I'm going to answer them right now before we even get to the Q&A. Now, the first question is, what happens if I just install base Windows 10 Pro onto a workstation system? Well, the answer is it's going to install properly and run just like a Windows 10 Pro would any other day. The problem is, now this system is actually no longer valid when it comes to Microsoft licensing. And if your or your customer is audited and this system is actually running Windows 10 Pro instead of Windows 10 Pro for workstation, that's a violation that could cost you upwards of $10,000 per system. If you've got five workstations and they're all running Windows 10 Pro instead of Windows 10 Pro for workstation, that's five violations. That's $50,000. It gets costly very, very quickly. Uh, so it's very important from a licensing point of view that you understand that any system that has a Xeon past the fall 2017 creators update must now be installed with Windows 10 Pro for workstations. The next question is, what happens to all my workstations that already have Windows 10 Pro on it? And the answer to that is, any workstation that has a Xeon that is currently running Windows 10 Pro that was activated before the 2017 Fall Creators update is considered valid through Microsoft and would not be subject to any fines in the case of an audit. If they would like to upgrade to Windows 10 Pro for workstations to take advantage of the features we're going to talk about a little bit later, they can do so through the Windows 10 Store. So just keep that in mind if they, some of the features that we talk about a little bit later are interesting to you, that you can do that right from the Windows Store and do an upgrade from Windows 10 Pro to Windows 10 Pro for workstations. Some of the key new features available in Windows 10 Pro for workstations are the resilient file system, which does a better job of protecting your data from corruption and correct any data corruptions on the drive before it becomes a failure. This has been available on the Windows server side for some time, but is now available in Windows 10 Pro for workstation. You also have the ability to use persistent memory, or NVDIMMs, uh, in your hardware setups. Uh, persistent memory is going to be a great feature uh, for those of you who need uh, quick reboots of your system, you need that, uh, that system to come back online ASAP. Uh, if your system supports persistent memory, now your operating so system supports it as well. Uh, access to SMB Direct for faster file sharing uh, and expanded hardware support, whereas Windows 10 Pro only supported two processors and up to two terabytes of memory, Windows 10 Pro for workstations will support up to four processors and six terabytes of actual memory. And another thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to Windows 10 Pro for workstations is all the back-end work they've done behind the scenes of the operating system to better utilize the Xeon processor's high-density core counts uh, compared to what you would see in Windows 10 Pro. 
uh, Microsoft has uh, invested a lot of R&D time in making sure that the Windows 10 Pro for Workstation's operating system does a better job of scaling with the Xeon processors than what you would see in Windows 10 Pro. So that's something to keep in mind when you're, when you're talking about whether you should or shouldn't upgrade from Windows 10 Pro to Windows 10 Pro for Workstation on some of your existing workstations that already have Windows 10 Pro. With all this being said, it's time to actually talk about some practical applications for workstations in the work environment and where some uh, uh, jobs that a workstation would be good for and other jobs that a workstation maybe is too much system for. And I want to start with uh, something that I'm pretty familiar with. It's a job that I did for five years before coming to DNH, which is post-production and video editing. Uh, after Effects and the Adobe Creative Suite uh, requires a system that has a very robust CPU and GPU to operate at its fullest potential. Now, you can operate the Adobe Creative Suite on pretty much any system hardware. Uh, they've, I've seen them run on anything like an i7 with a uh, consumer level GPU, which is your standard uh, GTX or Radeon graphics cards. 16 gigs of memory and, and so on from that. But to truly take advantage of that software, uh, you should go to Adobe's website and see what their recommended specs are. And they usually recommend something along the lines of a Xeon processor with a Quadro video card, like a P2000, P4000 graphics card. Because these are graphics cards that are made to be rendering video for long periods of time, whereas a consumer level graphics card like a GTX uh, 1080 is designed to be doing very high uh, level renderings for shorter periods of time, such you'd see as when you were actually gaming, playing any kind of computer games on your PC. So again, those systems can do a workstation job like Adobe Creative Cloud, but it's not going to do it as efficiently as a workstation system will. So here we got two instances of Adobe After Effects running on two different systems. On the left, we have Adobe After Effects running a file on our workstation system, and we have that same file running on our commercial system over here on the right. And what I'm going to do right now real quick is hit render. And while this is rendering, I want to tell you what we we're doing here. Uh, at first, we had uh, these videos just running basic uh, effects on both systems, and both systems were running equally. So we duplicated those effects. Uh, a second time, and they were still running equally. But the more and more we duplicated that effect, the, the greater and greater the difference between uh, the commercial and the workstation system became, to the point where the workstation system was finishing the render in only 18 seconds, where the commercial system was taking almost three times the length. Now these clips are only two seconds long. Imagine if this clip was two minutes long, four minutes long, an hour long how much longer it would take a commercial system to do this same workload that the workstation did. Uh, that adds up to a lot of wasted time uh, for your specialists, a wasted time for your hardware, and overtaxing hardware that really isn't designed to be doing that in the first place. Can it do it? Yes, absolutely. We've proven that a, a commercial system can run After Effects. You already knew it could. But there's a great, greater difference in the actual uh, speed and efficiency that a workstation system that's designed to run After Effects can bring to your customer's business that a co commercial system that isn't designed to do that can do. So that's something to keep in mind when you're, you're looking at, well, should I buy a workstation or a commercial system for, for applications that really are designed to be in a workstation environment. You got to think of the ROI and how much time those customers are going to have their specialists sitting around waiting for a render to end. And that's, that's applicable for pretty much anything, whether you're talking about AutoCAD or medical imaging or what have you. There are instances, however, where a customer may come to you and go, I need a workstation system, and they might actually not need a workstation system. And one of the more common ones we see at the Solutions Lab is we have uh, customers coming to us looking for systems that support uh, four to six monitors. And the reason they're doing this is because they're doing stock trading, um, which in a lot of cases, if you don't dig deep enough, 
could make you think they're doing a lot of data analysis, which in that case, you would need a workstation system. But most of the cases, it's just for day trading. They only need the six monitors so they can have six different screens up. They keep track of all their stocks as they're trading through the day. They're not doing anything really heavily uh, CPU intensive. So all they knew, need is a commercial system with a GPU that's capable of running six displays. They don't need to go in full board onto the workstation system because they're not doing any data analysis. Now, if you're, using, if you're working with a financial advisor that is doing a lot of data analysis as well, as well as doing some stock trading, definitely might want to think about doing a workstation. Also, check with that financial advisor, see what software they're running. So again, you can tailor that workstation uh, hardware to the software that, is, that it's running. Last thing I wanted to touch on is some of the features that you can get in a workstation that you might not be able to actually pull off in a standard commercial system. And for that, I want to jump back into our workstation. I'm going to show you a file that we have open on CAD and show you something that we've been uh, messing around with that I wasn't even able to execute uh, in the commercial system because we just didn't have the proper hardware for it. Let's take a look. So here we are in Autodesk AutoCAD 2008. And if you're not familiar with AutoCAD, it is a 3D modeling software that is primarily used by mechanical drafters to create parts, whether that's parts for cars, planes, computers, you name it. If it's a part of something, it was probably designed in part in a program like AutoCAD. And doing something like this, where I'm just uh, 3D orbiting around a wireframe, uh, it does take a lot of uh, CPU and GPU power to, to execute this smoothly. If I took it a step further and enabled the shading so you can actually see the model in a more uh, real environment, more 3D environment, you can see that the workstation system is still keeping up. If I was doing this in a business uh, system without a GPU, this would probably be pretty sluggish and be really difficult to use. Furthermore, if, I've had, if I had a business class system, I wouldn't be able to do something uh, like what I'm about to show you, which is I'm going to take this model and actually kind of give my customers, let's say, a more real life representation of it by viewing it in mixed reality using the Lenovo Explorer headset. So I've got the headset in front of me and I'm going to bring up the mixed reality portal in front of me so you can see what I'm seeing after I put on the headset. As you can see, when I put on the headset, I've got the, the model we were just looking at uh, large and in charge right in front of me. Uh, just by looking around, squatting up and down, I can uh, look into the model, look around it left and right. I can also kind of move over to the side here and then get a better idea of what the model looks like from the side. But viewing it in this environment gives me a more real life uh, representation of what this is going to look like. Uh, compared to just orbiting around it on a computer screen. Uh, it's much easier for me to visualize uh, where I need to make changes in, in some of the ridges or, or a hole that is too big or, or something like that, a bolt that might be need to be moved over a couple millimeters. It gives a much better sense of what this is going to look like and how it's going to feel in the real world. If you didn't have a dedicated GPU, you wouldn't be able to do that. And if also you didn't have a mixed reality headset, you wouldn't be able to do that as well. So I hope you've gotten a little bit more information on workstation systems. If you have any more questions, we have a live Q&A coming up. If not, you can email us at solutionslab at dnh.com if you've missed the Q&A or you're viewing on demand. If not, we'll see you during the live Q&A. And thank you for joining us.